The following entries are logs recovered from the Gull Point Lighthouse, located on a remote part of the northern coastline. These documents were found abandoned, the only remaining evidence of the lighthouse keeper, Thomas Marrow's last days at his post. The events described span a week, unfolding a narrative of isolation, unexplained phenomena, and escalating horror. Each entry provides insight into the psychological toll experienced by Marrow, culminating in a chilling finale that remains unresolved. The Coast Guard's subsequent investigation found no trace of Marrow, leaving the truth of his final days a matter of speculation and dark legend. Monday, October 3rd. Logbook entry by Thomas Marrow, keeper of the Gull Point Lighthouse. The air tonight is crisp, the kind that heralds the shift of seasons, from the warmth of summer to the chill of autumn. It's my first week alone here, tending to the lighthouse after old Mr. Hendricks retired. He warned me of the solitude, how it could play tricks on the mind, especially during the long, uninterrupted nights. I thought little of it. Solitude has always been an old friend of mine. At approximately 21 o'clock hours, the routine was as it always is. Check the light, ensure it's visible and operational, then scan the horizon for any ships. The sea was particularly calm tonight, a sheet of black glass under the moon's watchful eye. But it was not the sea that caught my attention. It was something in the distance, on the edge where the sea kisses the sky, a flicker that wasn't the lighthouse's reflection. Curiosity peaked. I grabbed the binoculars, hoping to catch sight of a passing ship or a late-night fisherman. Instead, what I saw was inexplicable. Shapes moving against the darkness, too uniform to be waves, too erratic to be any vessel. They twisted and turned, disappearing and reappearing with no discernible pattern or purpose. I chalked it up to the tired eyes of a lighthouse keeper, perhaps the beginning of Mr. Hendrix's forewarned tricks of solitude. With a lingering glance at the dark horizon, I recorded the observation in this logbook, an oddity perhaps worth mentioning to the Coast Guard in the morning. The rest of the night passed uneventfully, the strange movements in the distance not making another appearance. Yet as I lay down to rest, a part of me remained alert, listening for the sound of the waves, wondering if the sea itself harbors secrets in its depths. Tuesday, October 4th. Logbook entry by Thomas Marrow, keeper of the Gull Point Lighthouse. Tonight, the anomaly persisted, proving itself more than a mere trick played by my mind or the solitary nature of my post. The events unfolded similarly to last night, with the calm sea under the watchful moon, yet the atmosphere felt denser, charged with an unspoken anticipation. At 22.15 hours, my vigil at the Lantern Room bore witness to the return of the strange phenomena on the horizon. This time, armed with a resolve to find a logical explanation, I noted their characteristics more meticulously. The movements appeared not just as flickers, but as deliberate swirling patterns of light, almost rhythmic, dancing across the darkness at the edge of the world. No ship nor natural phenomenon I know moves with such intention, such grace. Drawing upon the equipment at hand, I attempted to signal towards the phenomena, using the lighthouse's light to cast a focused beam in their direction. The response was immediate and chilling. The movement ceased momentarily, as if acknowledging my attempt to communicate, before resuming with increased fervor. A cold shiver ran down my spine, the kind born from the realization that I may not be entirely alone out here, as I once believed. Compelled by a mix of duty and a growing obsession, I maintained my watch, recording the patterns and times of the appearances. They lasted longer tonight, well into the early hours of the morning, before dissipating into the sea fog that rolled in with the dawn. The isolation of the lighthouse now weighs heavier upon me, a stark contrast to the solitude I once cherished. I find myself listening intently for sounds other than the sea and the wind, wondering if the phenomena might, in some unfathomable way, communicate or reveal themselves further. I will report these occurrences to the Coast Guard come morning, though I hesitate to imagine their response. For now, I can only watch, wait and record, hoping for some semblance of understanding or, perhaps, a return to the mundane solitude of my first few nights here. Wednesday, October 5th. Logbook entry by Thomas Marrow, 
keeper of the Gull Point Lighthouse. The third night of my vigil over the enigmatic performances at sea brought with it a palpable sense of dread, one that lingered from the moment the sun dipped below the horizon. My conversation with the Coast Guard earlier in the day yielded little more than polite skepticism and assurances of a patrol in the coming days. Yet, as dusk fell, I knew no patrol boat could prepare for what lay in wait. The phenomena returned, as expected, yet tonight their behavior took on a new, unsettling quality. At precisely 23 o'clock hours, the lights didn't just dance at the edge of the darkness. They advanced closer to the lighthouse, close enough that I could see them without the aid of binoculars. Their movements were more purposeful, swirling in patterns that tugged at the edges of my understanding, hinting at a language of light and shadow. Compelled by an irresistible urge, I attempted once more to communicate, using the lighthouse's beacon in short, patterned bursts. The response was immediate and undeniable. The lights mirrored my signals before resuming their advance this time encircling the lighthouse in a display of luminous choreography that left me breathless and profoundly disturbed. The air around the lighthouse felt charged, electric, as if the very fabric of reality was being stretched and twisted by the phenomena's presence. The sea itself seemed to respond with waves lapping more insistently at the shore, a rhythmic counterpart to the aerial display. Hours passed in what felt like mere moments, the boundary between observer and participant blurring until the lights quite abruptly receded back to the horizon and vanished as dawn approached. The sense of loss was unexpected, a hollow ache for answers left unfulfilled. Tonight's events have left me with more questions than answers. The nature of these lights, their apparent desire for interaction, and the unsettling feeling of being observed, studied even, has transformed the lighthouse from a place of solitude to one of intense scrutiny. I am left to ponder the true purpose of these nightly visits and the origin of the entities behind them. Are they a natural phenomenon previously undocumented by science or something far stranger? My commitment to my duties remains, but I fear the answers I seek may prove more terrifying than the mystery itself. Thursday, October 6th. Logbook entry by Thomas Marrow keeper of the Gull Point Lighthouse. Fear grips the lighthouse tonight, a visceral, crawling dread that I've never known. The phenomena that once danced at the edge of the world with curious intent now reveals a more ominous purpose. The sea, my once constant companion, now feels like a vast, gaping moor, waiting to swallow me whole. At midnight, the lights returned, but not as before. They brought with them a darkness, a shadow that seemed to devour the light around it, turning the luminous dance into a macabre ritual. The air turned cold, so cold it burned to breathe, and the silence was shattered by a sound, no, a voice emerging from the depths of the darkness. It was unlike anything I've heard, a chilling whisper that seemed to speak my name, drawing me closer to the window, compelling me to look. And look I did. Against my better judgment, I gazed into the heart of that impenetrable darkness, and what I saw within will haunt me for the remainder of my days. Eyes, countless eyes, peering back at me. Not with malice, but with an insatiable hunger, a longing for something beyond comprehension. The lights and shadows began to converge upon the lighthouse, no longer content with their distant vigil. They pressed against the glass of the lantern room, their whispers growing louder, more insistent. I could feel them as if their cold fingers were brushing against the very walls that sheltered me, seeking entry, seeking me. In a panic, I extinguished the lighthouse's beacon, hoping the darkness would repel them. For a moment, the world was silent, save for the pounding of my heart and the crash of the waves below. Then the whispers returned, louder, angrier, a cacophony of voices that filled the night. I spent the remaining hours of darkness huddled in the corner of the lantern room surrounded by encroaching shadows and the relentless gaze of unseen eyes. Only the arrival of dawn dispelled the night's horrors, the light scattering the darkness and its minions back to whatever abyss they had emerged from. Today, the lighthouse feels tainted, as if the very stone and glass have been imbued with the night's terror. The sea, once a source of solace, now roars with a menacing persistence, as if warning me of the night to come. I'm unsure of what actions to take. The Coast Guard's patrol seems an eternity away, 
and I am left to face the coming night alone. Fear tells me to flee, but duty anchors me to this place. I can only hope that the light will prove a stronger guardian than the darkness that seeks to consume it, and me. Friday, October 7th. Logbook entry by Thomas Merrow, keeper of the Gull Point Lighthouse. Tonight, the boundary between the known and the unfathomable has not just been crossed, it has been obliterated. The events I record now are so beyond the realm of my understanding, they threaten the very fabric of my sanity. The day passed in a blur of anxiety and dread, each tick of the clock a somber toll marking the passage towards inevitable nightfall. With the setting sun, a stifling oppression descended upon the lighthouse, a palpable weight that seemed to smother the very air. As darkness embraced the coast, the sea churned with a ferocity I've never witnessed, as if the deep itself was in turmoil. At 23.30 hours, without the beacon to guide them, the lights, or beings, for I can no longer doubt their sentience, returned with a vengeance. This time they did not dance or swirl, they assaulted the lighthouse, a storm of light and shadow, their whispers now screams in the howling wind. The glass of the lantern room shuddered under the onslaught, the barrier between me and them vibrating with each impact. Then, amidst the chaos, a singular entity emerged, its form a maelstrom of darkness, larger and more defined than the rest. It pressed against the glass, its eyes, a thousand eyes, fixating on me with a gaze that pierced my soul. I felt it then, a pull, a desire not my own, urging me to open the door, to step into the tempest outside, to join them. The temptation was overwhelming, a siren's call promising answers, promising an end to the fear, to the isolation. In my weakest moment I approached the door, my hand trembling as it reached for the latch, but it was the memory of the sun, the warmth of light that stayed my hand. I realized then, the true power of the lighthouse was not in its ability to repel the darkness, but in its promise of dawn, of a return to light. I backed away, reciting every prayer and curse I knew, fighting against the call with every fiber of my being. The entity lingered, its gaze unyielding, until the first hint of dawn crept over the horizon. As the light grew, the entity and its legion receded into the sea, leaving behind a silence that was almost deafening. The sun has risen now, its light a balm to my frayed senses. But the battle is far from over. I know they will return with the night and I am left to wonder if my resolve will hold, if the light can truly protect me from what lies beyond. For now, I record these events as a testament to what I have witnessed, a beacon of truth against the tide of darkness that seeks to engulf us. I stand watch over the sea, a guardian of the light facing the darkness with a defiance born of fear and awe. Saturday, October 8th. Logbook entry by Thomas Marrow, keeper of the Gull Point Lighthouse. The siege of the previous night left a silence in its wake, a quiet so profound it felt as though both the sea and the sky were holding their breath. Today, I find myself in the eye of the storm, a momentary reprieve that I know deep in my bones is the calm before the final onslaught. I spent the day fortifying the lighthouse, checking every door and window, ensuring that the beacon was in perfect working order. The mundane nature of these tasks offered a small comfort, a reminder of the world I understood, a world governed by logic and light. As night descended, I braced for the return of the lights, the beings that had haunted my every waking moment and invaded my dreams. But to my surprise and growing unease, nothing happened. The hours ticked by each one quieter than the last, the sea whispering softly against the shore, the wind a gentle caress. The anticipation of a threat can be as taxing on the mind as the threat itself. I found myself jumping at shadows, at the slightest creak of the lighthouse, the silence amplifying every sound into a harbinger of dread. Several times I thought I saw something move in the darkness, a flicker of light, a shadow against the stars, but when I looked again, there was nothing. This absence of events, rather than offering relief, has tightened the knot of anxiety in my stomach. The question of why plagues me. Have they retreated, satisfied with the fear they've instilled, or is this the calm before a storm far greater than I can imagine?
The logbook, once a mere record of duties and weather, has become a confidant. The pages are a repository for my fears and speculations. I write not just to document, but to maintain a grip on my own sanity. To remind myself that there is still a world beyond the darkness, beyond the reach of the unexplained. Tonight I will not sleep. I will watch and wait, the beacon beside me a solitary sentinel in the darkness. The lighthouse stands as the last barrier between the known and the unknown. And I, its keeper, stand ready to face whatever comes with the rising of the sun. Sunday, October 9th. Logbook entry by Thomas Marrow, keeper of the Gull Point Lighthouse. They're here. Oh God, they've come not as before, not as lights or shadows, but as a maelstrom, a tempest of screams and whispers, tearing at the very essence of my being. The sea has risen, a beast unleashed, waves crashing against the lighthouse with the fury of the damned. The light, my only weapon, flickers and dances like a thing alive, casting long shadows that twist and coil around me, as if the darkness itself seeks to drag me into its depths. I can hear them, outside, inside, everywhere. Their voices a cacophony of madness that seeks to drown my own thoughts. I was a fool to think I could stand against them, a mere man against the abyss. They know me, they see me, and they want me. Not my body, but my soul, my essence, to drag me into the dark, where light cannot reach. The logbook is my last testament, the final record of Thomas Marrow, keeper of the Gull Point Lighthouse. To those who find this, know that I did not flee. I stood my ground. I faced the darkness with all the light I could muster. But it is not enough. It was never enough. The darkness is infinite, a void where light fades into nothing. I write these words with shaking hands, the ink blurring with my tears. I am afraid, so terribly afraid, not of death, but of what lies beyond, in the realm where these beings dwell. The door. I can hear it creaking, bending under the force of the storm outside. They are coming, and I have nowhere to run, no light bright enough to banish them. This is the end, not just of me, but of the light, of the beacon that stood as a guardian against the night. I leave this logbook as a warning, a plea to turn back from this place, to let the lighthouse stand as a tombstone to my folly, a monument to the darkness that lies beyond the reach of man. The door is breaking. They are here. I can see them in the cracks between the world where the light ends and the darkness begins. I, 